my name is Greg Peebles, and I am the director of UTUNESCO, and I've been the director of UTUNESCO for the past four years. So MUN is Model United Nations. It is meant to be a simulation of the real United Nations that happens in New York and all throughout the world. It's a chance for high school students and middle school students to kind of engage with global issues in a more realistic manner than just what they might traditionally do in their classroom. So MUN is important because it's, it allows students to take what they learn in class um, and really put it into action. The biggest criticism students always have in class is, how am I going to use this? And MUN is the way you're going to use it. Um, as a humanities teacher, MUN is the perfect outlet for all the work that we do throughout the year. It allows students to understand the things that they're learning in class have importance, and that you will use them in the future, and you could be using them to solve these huge systemic issues that we're addressing in this conference. Um, that the work you're doing in science class is going to help you understand issues like deforestation, which is being addressed in the environmental committee, or deal with space exploration, which is being addressed in the promoting science committee. So the hope with MUN and why it's such a big event at this school and why this school is such a good place for it is it allows you to take what you're doing in your humanities class or your science class um, and bring it into a real life context. And that's really what, as teachers, that's what we strive to do is to put learning in a real measurable context and MUN kind of allows us to do that. Hi, my name is Jessica Kang. I'm the Secretary General for UNESCO 2020. I've worked with Mr. Peebles as three different aspects, delegates, chairs, and leadership team. So I've worked with him um, about three years, and this is my second year um, working with him as a um, Secretary General, and it is really nice to have Mr. Peebles um, next to me to work together um, for UNESCO 2020. We have been preparing UNESCO 2020 almost about one year, which is a long period just for a three days conference. So we have been always meeting together um, to talk about, um, to plan all the UNESCO stuff. Uh, so this year's theme is protecting the past, facing the future. Um, and what Jessica and I were thinking when we decided to come up with this theme was that a lot of times in MUN, you tend to just think about the future and you don't think about how a lot of the issues that we have currently and in the future are actually systemic issues that kind of have come from the past. So what our thought was on the theme was that we would think about what issues have happened in the past and then how those issues are connected to things in the future. Uh, so this year we have 13 schools involved in the 7th annual UNESCO conference. Um, what makes this year a little bit more exciting is that we have school, a school from Malaysia coming this year, and we also have a school coming from northern China in Wuhan um, on top of the normal schools that always come in the Pearl River Delta. So over the last seven years, MUN's evolved um, a lot. Um, I took it over four years ago, um, and it originally started as a student's personal project in year 10, um, just kind of as a way to get MUN going in the southern China area, and it really has kind of evolved into this large annual event um, that every school in southern China tends to take part of. So I'm Kushi Nilesh Patil. I'm a senior at Xinhuai International School. And this year I'm president chair in the GA3 committee in UNESCO. So that's the Social Humanitarian and Cultural Committee. In our committee, we've been looking at the global issues of reproductive health and human trafficking. So for our reproductive health topic, it's very wide spanning. We go from sexual education all the way to 
issues like infertility and abortion, and mainly we're focusing on the legislative core of reproductive rights. So it's a very comprehensive topic and delegates from all countries are having a very difficult time on um, focusing on different aspects of the issue based on their country's priorities. And our second topic is on human trafficking, specifically for the purpose of forced marriage, as they're seeing an influx of human trafficking, especially with women, for the forced marriage around the world, now ranging from the Middle Eastern and Asian nations to European and American nations too. Hello, my name is Peter Kang. I'm a student from Merkiston International School, Shenzhen, and my role is a president chair at the Education Committee at the UNESCO. In the Education Committee, uh, we have been debating on the issues of protecting minority languages and culture, which are losing their basis under the recent trend of globalization. And along with that, we are talking of um, the degree of integration of information technologies within primary education as well. Hi, my name is Kaisa Quinn. I go to QSI Shenzhen, and I'm the President Chair of the Human Rights Committee. So in the Human Rights Committee, we have been tackling the topic of the increase of global surveillance and how to regulate it, and how to mitigate the effects of persecution of religious minorities. So one of the key challenges I faced at MUN myself, especially as a chair, is the fact that you have to improvise in situations. So thinking under this pressure, under the pressure of having to respond very fast, but I think that helps you develop both your critical thinking skills and your uh, improvisation skills so that it, it trains you to think faster and trains your logic to work better. So I think it's one of the key benefits that MUN has as well in the long run for your cognitive development. MUN challenged me in a number of ways. Um, most importantly, I'll say it has widened my perspective and my point of view in terms of um, when I was thinking of global, global affairs and global politics. Um, there are countries with many different points of information and different political backgrounds that they, act they actually sprung from. And the, uh, the attempt to understand what they want and what they believe it's right to do, is, is the just thing to do, is the most fundam fundamental and important part when make, uh, reaching an agreement and negotiation between countries. And, this, uh, and the ability to, um, ability to understand others is definitely a very significant part in this MUN and doing so has challenged me significantly in terms of that. One of the challenges I have faced in MUN is learning how to see things from a different perspective, a perspective that might not necessarily be my own and learning how to argue from a different side that I might not necessarily agree with. MUN to me personally and in general I think has a variety of benefits. As I mentioned before, there's the cognitive thinking development that you have during your time at a conference, but also you build social skills, communication skills, as you have to work with a variety of people from different places. And you develop skills in which you learn how to overcome your own perspective and accept other perspectives, because sometimes you have to debate or you have to argue for a position in which you don't believe in yourself. So I think those are two key takeaways. The, the key benefits of MUN, I will argue, that will be the uh, wider perspective and points of view that you will be having as the conference goes through. But along with that, you uh, also learn to ha learn to communicate and cooperate with other people who you uh, who uh, who might have similar or a very different objective with you. And the process of negotiation will help it will help your logical skills and develop your ability to uh, to reach a negotiation with others who might want something very different from you. And plus, you can make a lot of friends, of course. I think one of the key benefits of MUM for students is helping them develop public speaking skills, which I think is a very important life skill, both inside and outside of school. For the future, Model United Nations has some very practical benefits, like ap applying to your personal life, as well as some more more insightful or more deeper, deeper benefits. For example, practical benefits would be university applications, social skills, making contacts from the places around you. You know, you know these are the people that are going to help you five, ten years from now when you need, when you, when you think you need help from someone. And apart from contacts and university applications, I think MUN really helps with developing your personal, interpersonal skills and your thinking skills as well as giving you some insight on different issues around the world. I mean, before I came here today, I was reading about reproductive rights. I knew about the, the different countries' stances on these issues, but I didn't know about how many different, how, how multifaceted this issue was and how different countries respond 
to this issue as I'm seeing now from the 30 delegates in my committee. So it really opens up your mind to new perspectives and trains you to think in different ways that you didn't think you could before. MUN will be one of the, one of the uh, best, best CCA that you will take if you are, uh, you are very ardently preparing for your future. I believe the, uh, my experience in MUN and my position of leadership taken has significantly influenced my CV and my university application and I believe that they has taken a significant role of uh, my offer from University of Edinburgh, King's College and Cambridge University. I believe um, that this will not just end here. My experience in MUN will aid me all throughout my future uh, my future as an adult and as I am growing up. I think that the arbitration skills, the communication skills, along with the public speaking skills that MUN helps develop in its students, that will make a very competitive edge for your university application because it shows character. If we're talking about MUN, personally I would and I have been recommending MUN to middle schoolers and high schoolers that I know personally all throughout my high school life. Yes, of course, I'll definitely uh, encur encourage other students to participate in MUN. Um, there are so many benefits, and even though you will be challenged uh, to do many things that you haven't done before, you will be, you will be attaining a lot of important skills that will be a very significant, a significant part of you and your competitiveness in the future. I will definitely encourage almost everyone I know to participate in MUN if they are not yet doing so. I am so passionate about recommending MUN to other students that I became the chief marketing officer for my own school's MUN. So MUN will continue to develop um, in the future. Every year it seems to just keep getting bigger um, and bigger. And the hope is that eventually when I do move on and hand off the reins to someone else that it continues to grow. Um, it really is kind of a capstone event in this region and is something that I want to see grow, grow and grow and grow. And hopefully when we move into the new school, we're able to host an MUN that is more than 300 delegates. It's something that can host 500 delegates or even more and we'll have bigger venues and uh, places to hold large general assemblies instead of just our classrooms right now which can hold about 30 delegates comfortably. So yeah, I hope it, it continues to grow and um, more students get involved um, and it really can continue to be kind of the leading MUN conference um, in this area.